our candidates, you actually, to the real classrooms. We start from your second year, your third year, continue into your fourth year when you do student teaching. Okay, so every single year, once you start a teacher preparation program, you will be in the field. And eventually, you'll be in the field for four months for student teaching. So we use a lot of classrooms, real students, for you to work with them, which is great. Is that right? Because of this bell, guess what? The teachers were very, very anxious, were very, very nervous, because they really wanted to work with the children to raise the test score. And they didn't want our new teachers or teacher candidates to mess it up. Okay, so what do we do now? At the time, so we really made the promise to the school districts. We are going to send you only the best prepared teacher candidates, not the best teachers because they are not there yet, okay? However, we want to make sure we'll send you the people who are professional, who try their best, and they will do their best in the classroom. So we made a promise to send them the teacher candidates who are really, really ready, okay, in order to ease their anxiety, okay. So actually, we continue to do that, even though the pressure was a little bit up because the state, you know, has realized the kind of impact on teachers and also the difficulty of teacher education programs are facing to place the students. Still, we want to send out the best qualified teacher candidates into the field. So that really means you may get straight A's. Somehow, if you don't know how to work with people, if you don't have the kind of people skill, if you cannot work with other people collaboratively, or if you don't have the right attitudes or disposition, we'll say, you know what, I'm not so sure if I have the confidence in you working in the school setting. So that's the kind of bigger context for you, okay? Uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so in order for you to be really prepared to get into the field, the first of all, we do have expectations while you're still on campus. Knowledge, do a good job for your coursework because we do have the GPA requirement to demonstrate the content that you're going to teach, okay? And also the skill, how do you perform as a student? Writing, speaking, communicating with all the university personnel. Okay, I'm telling you, don't think that you are supposed to be a professional only when you are in the field, because we don't know. We have to see you all the time, and we want to make sure we know you. And you know, in the education courses, quite often you'll be put into groups. Okay, the group project, you know, that kind of thing, you have to work with others. Uh, you may be the kind of person who will say, you know what, I don't work well with other people. However, I always do a good job if I am the only one working on that assignment. Well, to become a teacher, probably you really, really have to work on your skill of working with other people. That is because in the reality of the world, very often, especially in the teaching profession, you are not going to be working by yourself. And that is extremely important. And uh, another reality in the world is really if you talk to your parents, if you talk to other people who have already got into the workforce, guess what? It's very, very rare that you get into a workplace where you like everybody. <laughs> there are always people that you don't like, you don't enjoy being with. with. It's not because they are bad people or you are bad people. No, okay, maybe you are one of those that other people don't like. I don't know, okay? <laughs> yeah, just in my school, probably there are professors who don't like me. There's a high possibility, right? Just we have different personalities. We have different working styles, correct? What do we do when I get into the situation with somebody that I don't like because of the personality, because of different working style? I cannot get rid of that person. I can quit, of course. But when you cannot quit your job, what do you do? You've got to learn to work with all kinds of people. You have to be able to resolve the tension. You have to be able to turn it better. That is important. And that starts from the college classroom. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about in terms of how you talk with everybody on campus. Because in the past, I did have students who really didn't know how to talk with the registrars, who didn't know how to talk with the, you know, the university or even the school uh, staff members. And we are watching. We want you to be professional. One way to be professional is to stop thinking about yourself as a UNC student, but as a teacher. 
teacher candidate of UNC. Okay, think about self as a teacher candidate. That helps you. That really helps you. Then you say, okay, I'm a teacher candidate. Then you sort of pay a little attention to the way you talk, to the way you write. Okay, that's a very good strategy to use, actually. Okay, uh, and also in terms of this position, I talk about that, you know, how do you treat everything. Okay, now expectation in the field, you will start getting into the field from the very beginning, okay, all the programs are designed in such a way. And uh, in the field, of course, when you work with students, you need to demonstrate the content of pedagogical knowledge, and you need to be able to work with, now it's not a classmates, okay, but a kid call students, the children in the classroom. And also our colleagues in the schools, all other teachers in the schools and the principals. And also you need to perform as a professional teacher. Really, once you are in the school, you are being viewed as a teacher. That's very, very important, okay? It's always a good idea to overdress a little bit the first day you show up. And then, you know, you learn about the culture, you see how other people do it, then you can dress down a little bit. But, you know, teaching is a relatively more conservative profession. You know, you really want to be careful because really, you know, they are the children and then behind the children are parents, okay? Uh, this one, the UNC professional disposition, this is something that I know you are not going to be able to see this, but I'm just going to tell you this is a form that we'll continue to use during the uh, period of time when you take courses and also when you are in the field. So this is not a grade, but you will be evaluated for your professionalism and disposition using this form several times. It's okay for you not to be perfect to start with. Some of the professors actually would like you to do a self-evaluation using this. It's so interesting. And then, you know, gradually the, 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 uh, the hope is that, or our goal is that uh, towards the end of your teacher preparation, you'll be perfect. Okay, and sometimes we do certain things we just don't know it is not appropriate until you know it happens. So this is a kind of tool that will help you and also the professors and your supervisors who are going to work with you. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about the reality of the field. This is really, really very uh, recent data. I think it came out, I don't know the date, is July or August of this year? Oh, what I have is August 27th. So this is really, really new data. And uh, it shows, look at the number on the, what is it, your right hand side, right? 48 and 46, these are the number of states. That's how many states are reporting the shortage of teachers in the content areas, okay? So the highest need is still in math. And I don't see a lot of hands raising. We do have some math candidates, but this is the short, uh, shortage area. Special education, followed by science, followed by foreign languages, and then ESL, which is CLD in Colorado, Culturally and Linguistically Diverse Education. So these are the major areas in the whole nation, okay, that, that you know, there is some kind of shortage right here. Okay, so I have elementary candidates, I have early childhood candidates here, I have social studies, and wow, then what am I doing here? Actually, no, actually, there is a shortage of teachers. Basically, there is a shortage of teachers. Nevertheless, all the school, well, actually, later on, we have more important people who are going to talk about um, the, the reality of the field. It's always a good idea for you to pick up some kind of endorsement, another credential to really help you to become more marketable. If you're in social studies, I strongly recommend you considering endorsement in English teaching or CLD culturally and linguistically diverse. And it's a very good combination, actually, okay? And uh, uh, for even foreign languages, actually, foreign languages, there is a shortage, but it also depends on which language you are in, okay? So if you are in a language that Colorado or another state that doesn't need a lot of teacher, if you add CLD, okay, you will make yourself much, much more marketable because all the schools would need a CLD, CLD teachers to work with the students. Okay, so just consider that. And these are some of the things that, uh, for the CLD endorsement, actually it's 18 credits. In fact, if you start talking with your advisor, there's the high possibility you can use some courses to double dip. Okay, in LAC, actually, I know there's at least one area where you can fulfill both your LAC requirement and the CLD one course requirement. And also, if you have free electives in your uh, what is this in your program? I know history actually has free electives. Instead of taking, you know, some other things, 
to fulfill your free electives, do the CLD. Okay, that will really make your degree more value added. Okay, so uh, of course you can add special education, you know, and other things you can think about. I'm going to stop right here because we really have more important people that you would like to hear from. All right, thank you. Ginny uh, and I are here in, in higher education, but we also like to bring in some folks who are working in human relations and in administration from schools. <coughs> so at this time, I want to bring my panel up. We belong to an organization called CASPA, which is part of CASE, which is part of the vegetable soup of professional organizations. But basically, that's the Colorado Association for School Personnel Professionals. So if you want to introduce yourself. Um, I'm not Michael Clow. I'm president of the superintendent of schools in uh, School District 2017. I'm Allie Shore from Cooter School District in Port Collins. I'm Robert Hepperly, and I'm here in Greeley in School District 6. So, what do they need to do to get hired? <laughs> how, yeah, how, yeah. They, yeah, how can they you know, yeah. prepare themselves better and when you look for teachers, what are you looking at? And, uh, what are the things that they typically do? Um, yeah, and also, you, you know, you will be open up for questions as well. Yeah. Okay? These are the real people from real school districts, okay? Mm -hmm. They're the people that hire teachers. Not to worry if I get off task to slip people. Okay. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, Michael Clown was our Chief Human Resource Officer. He was here last night speaking to another group of uh, future teachers. So, I want to thank you on behalf of all the students in Colorado for choosing to teach. I can't think of a better occupation and uh, vocation in the world than the one that you're about to embark on. Uh, Miss Quitter, which is a great name. It's a great um, name, yeah. Raise your hand again if you're a rural kid. I taught, I taught Lyman, it was in Deer Trail, and the I-70 corridor folks. Okay, they desperately need you in rural Colorado. There's a teacher shortage across the state, across the country. They desperately need you in rural Colorado. Um, I started out in Lyman in 1993, taught for two years, and was a counselor there at the same time. And the third year I was there, I was principal they desperately need talent. If they need me to be principal, they desperately need a warm body, okay? <laughs> Can't promise that for you, but there are opportunities in rural Colorado uh, that don't exist in the Denver metro area. Um, currently serving in uh, School District 27J, which is in, headquartered in Bright, but we serve Bright, Colorado, in, in the northern range of Commerce City, and uh, the east growth area there in Thornton. Any 27J graduates? There's one, awesome. A couple over there. <laughs> Perfect. Go Bulldogs. Any Thunderhawks? Perfect. Okay. Any Warriors from Eagle Ridge? No? All right. A um, little bit on 27J. We're, uh, we're bigger than you think. The 16th largest school district in the state of Colorado. Uh, here in District 6, they, they are the 13th largest. We're closer than you realize. I left my office and was here in about 35, 36 minutes, and I mostly didn't speed. Okay? Uh, we're more dynamic than you can imagine. We've grown and tripled in size since the year 2000. From about 5,000 kids to over 17,500. Uh, we just opened a new elementary school. We've got a new uh, 5A high school that'll open in the fall of 2018. A new middle school is coming. So we, we're hiring folks. So to, to the prompt, we have over 150 new teachers this year. Uh, we roll off the red carpet for new teachers, literally. We're real proud of that. We've that, been doing that for about 12 years. Because none of you are doing this to get rich, so we love on you. Roll off the red carpet, we're applaud. It's like worth the, worth, the, worth the carpet, take lots of pictures. But it's a lot of fun. Um, but again, I can't thank you enough for choosing this. It's a great opportunity for you. It's a wonderful, wonderful vocation. Uh, USC is near and dear to my heart. This is the sixth or seventh time that I come up to speak to students, whether it be the uh, these are all sophomore-ish, right? Think about your practicum. I was here two weeks ago talking to folks heading into the student teaching experience, and I've done interview panels for special ed early childhood. I'm a UNC grad, this is my home. I'm a Greeley West grad. I've got a daughter here as a junior who's not pursuing education, which hurts my heart. Uh, my, my wife, Jessica, got a master's degree here from UNC. She's a principal in Adams 12, so I'm happy to be here. I'll stop, because these folks are sort of dying to say some things as well, but Ask lots of questions, but thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing to teach kids. Sorry, I told you to hook me. I know, no, no, that was good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's got the story going, right? It went all the way around. That's good. <laughs>
Well, let's see, I'm Allie Behire um, in Hooter School District, uh, about 200 teachers every year. Um, so it's a little bit bigger. We have about 20,000, um, 30,000 students now. Um, so we are always looking for, well, any teacher, um, math teachers, special ed teachers. Um, but I know many of you are not going into those fields and it's not that you will not be marketable, you certainly will be. Um, we're looking for a lot of the things that your professor told you about. Um, two endorsements, um, if you speak another language, if you, um, are, if you don't look like most teachers look, which is like me, or if you have experiences that are different from most teachers, um, study abroad, um, I think I already mentioned speak another language, um, college athlete, uh, worked at a camp in the summer. I mean, we're just looking for teachers who better uh, mirror our students, and that's kind of hard to find in Colorado or really everywhere. So um, we're looking for something that you know, really sets you apart. And I think they always ask about what not to do, but we'll, I'll, I'll stick with what to do now. So those are some hints. So I'm Robert Heffley, I'm here in Greeley. Um, I'm just going to echo what they said. Um, I guess number one, thank you for choosing this profession. I'm a father of two young, two young daughters. I have a first grader and a fifth grader here in Greeley. And as a parent, um, there is nothing more important to me than, than who my daughter's teachers are. Um, and so when I hire a teacher, I always look through the lens of what I want my daughter in that classroom. Um, and so um, to echo them, the more things you can have on your resume, the better. Um, usually there's you know, for an elementary posting, we can have 60, 70 people apply for that position. Okay, so like, who has the CLD endorsement? Who's taught in a rural school or in a title school or in a variety of environments or international? Okay, we're looking for something that's going to set you apart. Because um, if you're just like, I want to teach kindergarten and you just have an elementary endorsement, there's going to be 20 or 30 of you that, that look the same. So, so think about that as you guys do your student teaching and your practicum. Um, choose a title school. Choose a rural school. Choose different environments. Okay, it's like they said. We're looking for teachers that are going to mirror um, our students and experiences that we want our students to have. And the more you can bring to the table, um, the better. Let me give you one more. This is an easy frame for you. Think about just for a minute. What do you want from your students? Right. Think about your ideal student in your classroom. What is it you most want? those young men and women or those young boys and girls to be as a student and a learner. What do you want from them? Think about that just for a minute. What would make them an exceptional student? And here's the hook. That's what we want from you as teachers. We want you to be a learner. We want you to have a growth mindset. We want you to try new things and fail gloriously and then fail forward and fail better the next time. We want you to be learners and not be, don't be afraid to try new things. We want you to grow. With 27J, Pooter, and Greeley, we need you to continue to grow because the profession has changed dramatically in the 25 years that I've been doing this. Never in my life, when I was principal at Prairie View, did I think I need a cell phone policy in 1993. Nor did I think I'd be chasing down discipline issues around social media. She called me such and such on Facebook. Or, it's crazy, right? But think about what you want from your students. That's what, we want. That's what we want and need from you as employees. Be on time, be prepared, be a learner. Don't be afraid to try new things, work hard. Grit, persistence, all those things you want in your kids, we want in you as teachers. Is that a good frame? Makes sense, but why wouldn't we want? We're paying you. We're paying you to be there. Kids just show up and get an education. <laughs>